Alright guys, welcome back to another MCreator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at variable energy, <laughs> variable energy again. And this time we're basically going to be covering a coal generator. So it basically takes coal or charcoal or any items with the uh, coals tag for vanilla Minecraft. And it will basically convert that into energy over time. So... An example of this is set up here. I have a simple progress bar here in basically showing how much fuel is left in the particular uh, block itself. And then what I have here is the coal slot for basically putting in um, fuel. So basically that's all that's doing is it's our fuel and once it reaches zero, then it will reset if there's an item that can basically support that. A output block is, or output direction is at the back here. So having a cable or something like that will basically allow for the energy to be passed to a cable or another device if it's supported next to that particular coal generator. Um, now for the amount of fuel that one piece of coal generates is 50% or 50 points which is shown on the screen here it says energy 50 out of the actual total block of fuel so we can use our energy settings device to basically see that and if we right click on it with the plugs as you can see we have our output set to north so it's basically facing south right now and the output is uh, facing north uh, so that's basically what's going on there with the how the actual block works so let's go into M Crater and I'll show you the basics of how the block is set up a lot of it we've already covered already so make sure to check the older tutorials for this series and I'll cover what is different in this particular block <music> So everything is actually under certain folders now. We have our generators, our tags, our tools, and transport, which is for the cables and stuff like that. Uh, cables also have junctions, so those are broken up into two different things there. Uh, tools, we have the settings device, and for tags, we have basically our tag for where we're registering our variable energy for the um, energy passing passing energy from block to block so that's basically where tags are located and then we have been working on generators for generating different types of power and stuff like that so we have the uh, three different types of generators that I've created I have created the solar panel wind turbine and now the coal generator if you go under the coal generator then we have the block and GUI so the GUI consists of the actual GUI it has the progress bar here and that starts with the input or the the progress bar of being empty and goes to a fully filled bar at the bottom and we only have one slot for this particular inventory so this basically is the only slot that we need um, conditions, there is a lot of conditions. I have done a tutorial on this exact system. It's a little bit different uh, in the regards that it's counting down rather than going up. So that's the only difference with the progress itself. So it's not too much different other than that. I've basically just changed the variable names just a little bit, but it does the exact same thing. So basically what we're doing is we're getting the burn time, which is how much um, time it basically has left in that particular cycle. Um, so the burn time is, uh, how do I put it, is the percent that the progress bar has a total capacity of. So if your fuel is 600, uh, uh, burns for 600 ticks then you want to set your burn time of 600 ticks and then in the the progress bar here what it's doing is basically taking 600 dividing that by 10 which is equals out to be 10 percent each and then what we're doing is we're basically taking that number we're setting a 
but getting the value of the burn progress, which is defined in the update tick. And then we're testing if it's greater than, and then our math equation for how many times we want to test for. So basically we're taking the crafting time, which is here, we're multiplying that by nine. So if it's greater than 90%, then what we're doing is we're going to return true. If false, then we're going to return false. So then we have the other ones, which are basically the exact same thing, but this counts down. So basically, uh, bar one is actually 80 to 90 percent and uh, you can tell by the percent type is because it's basically saying uh, times eight or times nine so equal to or less than 90 percent and greater than 80 percent so that's basically the only difference here and that goes all the way down to the last two so progress bar eight um, now, because we don't need to test for multiply by one, of all I'm basically doing is I'm testing for the local variable. If it's greater than the local variable and less than the multiply, the 20%. So this is still 1%. So 10% and then between 10% and 20%. And then the ninth one is basically just testing if it's greater than zero and equal to or less than 10%. So that's the only difference with all of them. They're basically the exact same thing. All right, so now that we got the progress conditions condi uh, covered, now under the inventory, all these basically have the conditions for those things that we just covered. So this is the zero one, which is basically the ninth value, and it counts basically down from empty to the full value. So, nine is actually should be zero and the zero should actually be nine empty should always be displayed all right so now that we got that out of the way we can go back to coal generator and then we'll go into blocks and then we have our block itself so let's cover the block <laughs> So we have set up the textures. Our output side is at the back, which is uh, if the block is facing north, then it is south. And for the rotation, I have it set up for the Y axis for player side. So basically it can rotate northeast, south or west. And all the other settings are the default here. The hitbox is just a regular cube. Uh, the properties are basically set up however you want. Uh, there's no particular requirement for any of these settings here. And then the tick rate is set to one. This is actually important to make sure the energy is passed uh, evenly. And I've set the color of the map to iron just because it fits the block actually a little bit better. And I have set the reaction to being pushed by a piston to block. So basically it won't be able to be pushed and then the actual inventory, we have basically enabled a tile entity for this block. This is important to use the inventory and to set our MBT value variables, which we'll cover in a little bit. I've set the inventory that we basically just covered and then I've enabled right click so we can open it. And then what I've basically done is set the slot size to one because we only have one slot and I've set the maximum stack size to uh, 64 and then what we have down here is basically allowing for the items to be dropped if the block is broken and allowing a comparator output data so if depending on how full the inventory is it will output a certain strength of redstone uh, the energy slash fluid storage for forge. I haven't used this. This is all variable energy, so we don't need to use this. And then we have three different procedures here for different uses. So this basically uh, lets us use the settings device to test for certain values. This basically sets our default values. And this generates the, basically moves and generates the energy as well as the progress stuff. So. We'll cover the default values first. So 
So when the block is added, what we're going to need to do is we're going to set our fuel time, which is basically the time that the block basically generates um, smelts the fuel for. So again, if it's uh, 600 for how long you want your fuel to last, then then uh, this will be basically what the default value for that is. And then we have the time offset. This is a secondary timer that we're using to generate a smaller amount of fuel, or pardon me, energy. So this basically is the overall timer, and then we're, we have a secondary timer here. And then underneath that, we have the burn progress and burn time. This has to do with the progress bar. And then we have our standard, um, basically our standard variables for the block itself. So most of the other blocks use these exact same variables uh, for all of the um, other things. So we have the energy capacity, which is how much the block can actually store. The energy send limit, which is how much the block can send at a time. And then the energy store energy stored is how much the energy can actually be um, how much energy is actually stored in the block and then we have down here our plugs for the blocks itself so depending on the direction of the block it's facing we need to set the opposite side of the direction that the block is because it's on the back side of the block for the output plug then we need to basically say, okay, is it facing north? All right, then we need to set the output um, plug to the south direction. Now, there is no input plugs or any um, other output plugs, so this is the only directions that uh, settings that I need to set. And again, the up and down settings are down here. We don't need to set them every time just because it's not necessary, we just need to make sure that the plugs are properly set per direction. So north is south, uh, east is west, south is north, and west is east. So those are the only output plugs. All right, so let's move on to on the block right clicked as this one's pretty easy to cover. So here what we have is just the quick procedure to send a message to the provided player. Uh, what we're doing is we're basically just sending the data for if the player right clicks on the block within uh, energy settings device, which allows us to either see the energy stored and capacity of the block, or it can display the plugs of the block it, that is um, connections and stuff like that. So this basically holds the plug data and this holds the data for the energy stored in capacity. So the other thing, the last procedure that we need to cover is the update tick. This is a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of stuff going on here because we have a couple timers and stuff, but I'll do my best to explain each section. So it's broken up into pretty much five sections. We have our actual item timer, which basically uh, consumes the item and generates the power overall. Then we have the actual gener energy store energy generation for the um, blocks. So this basically generates the energy from the fuel. And then what we have here is basically setting the progress time, um, basically the progress bar for the uh, total percentage. And then down here, what we're doing is we're setting the um, timer for that particular progress bar. And now this is a little bit different. Uh, it's not the time, it's the uh, total maximum time um, for the value. It's very similar to um, 
I'll explain that in just a second. And then there is the actual direction for pushing the energy to the next blocks. So we've covered this part in the past, so I'm not gonna cover that, but basically what it does is it takes the energy from the energy storage and then it tests if the block, uh, wherever the output side is or the output directions and it sees if it can basically push energy that direction. If it can, then it'll basically move the energy into that particular part. If not, then it won't. So let's go back up to the energy consumption timer and we'll cover how this basically works. So basically the fuel time is basically the global time for the item, how long that can last. So what I've set here for the fuel time is I basically tested if the fuel time is equal to or greater equal to or less than zero. So zero or z zero or less. And then what I've basically done is tested for the Minecraft colon coals tag, which is the tag that Minecraft uses for coal and charcoal to, under the same group. And then if that's true, then what I'm doing is basically setting the fuel time to 600. So 600 is an important number. We'll get to that down here, but right now, uh, the other thing that we're doing is basically removing that one item from the slot that we have the coal in. Uh, if the time is actually greater than zero, then what we're doing is we're going to subtract that uh, fuel time, so our 600 value by um, one digit. So this will happen every tick and that will basically count down until it reaches zero and if there's more items then it will just continue burning. The fuel time offset basically is for our power generation so again um, it's a secondary timer and what we're doing here is we're testing if the fuel time offset is equal to or less than zero so again very similar to this system up here and then what we're doing is we're testing if the fuel time is greater than 100. If it is greater than 100, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the fuel time offset to 100, and then we're going to basically set test if the energy stored, so the block's energy storage uh, comp compartment, we're going to see if it can accept additional 10, uh, 10 energy in value for the energy capacity. So the energy capacity is the total block capacity. So basically what we're doing is we're testing if there's room left in the energy storage for that particular value. So if it's equal to or less than 10%. Uh, after which we're basically just setting it. And if the fuel time offset is greater than zero, then what we're doing is we're going to basically increase the, or decrease the number by one uh, every tick. So that's basically that secondary timer where that comes into play. Now this part right here basically sets the fuel time. So our fuel time is here. And depending on what the value is for the fuel time, this value for the per burning progress will vary. This has to do with the actual progress bar, um, how much is di displayed in total. So just make sure that it's the same as the fuel time. Uh, down below here, basically what we're doing is we're testing if the burning progress, now this has to be after the burning progress that we're setting the fuel time to, and we're testing if it's greater than zero. And if it is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the burning time to 600. Now 600 should be the same value as we're basically setting the fuel time. So this basically calculates how large the progress bar range is from. So for example, this value here, fuel time can basically be subtracted where this 600 down here for the burning time is basically similar how energy capacity works. It's just a static number that basically calculates the full range from uh, basically how long the uh, 
total time of the progress can basically calculate. So if you have a hundred, uh, per basically a hundred percent, then uh, then what this would do, or let's say it's a hundred. So this will be a static one hundred, and then the burn progress is going to actually calculate if it's in the 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 actual progress bar. If it's uh, say 10% of that 100, then it's gonna be 10% of the progress bar displayed. So this basically is a static number. You shouldn't change this. It should be the exact same value as the fuel time when you're actually setting it up to accept more fuel. And then basically down here, what we're doing is if it's um, equal to or less than zero, then we're basically just setting the burn time value to zero. And again, this is just the procedure for moving the energy from point A to point B into the blocks that are accepted by it. So that's the update tick. There's a lot to cover in that. I'm really tired from talking. Uh, there is one last thing that I actually have to do talk about. Now, all these different blocks that use variable energy have to be registered to the tag that we have here, which is variable underscore energy underscore blocks. And basically what this does is it registers the block as a variable, variable energy block, which allows for energy to be pushed or pulled from the block itself. So as you can see here, I've basically registered the coal generator. So that's all there is to it. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video. The link to the tutorial, or not tutorial, the uh, project page on GitHub for the procedures, workspace, and resources is in the description. So you can check that out down below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.